a lot of my marriage and even in the dating years, I felt like the entire time I was trying to prove myself to him. And it wasn't that he required that. That's what I was that was say. Yeah, that was yeah. my own issue. That was me. I felt as though because he was the one that um, he played in the NFL, he, he bust his butt to make the money that he made, and I wanted him to relax. I, I didn't want him to have to want for anything. Mm. I wanted him to just be able to enjoy his life. But I didn't feel like even after marriage, I didn't even feel like I had that right. <laughs> Yo, what's poppin'? You know what time it is, your boy, Mr. J Hill, J Hill Podcast. Uh, I don't. It's like eleven o'clock at night. Um, <laughs> random interviews. That's what we do. Um, y'all don't y'all don't know this, but we know this. Um, special guests in the building. I gotta take my time. <laughs> you know how I be I be talking shit on my podcast about people that don't be de- answering DMs. This is one of them. You know what? But it's always all it's good because it's good. It's good because this shows me elevation in my platform and it shows me elevation in, in work, which motivates you guys to continue to work. Um, this young lady, she's no stranger to to television, to the big screen. Um I, is it fair to say you started off with um Real Housewives of Potomac? Yeah. Okay, I did. Real I did. Housewives of Potomac. Then she did Love and Marriage DC. And even there was some controversy because she was about to do Huntsville. No, so Love and Marriage Huntsville was the franchise that that opened up the door for DC. DC. Okay. Yes. But that was like a little bit of like static there, right? People was It upset. was a little tension because I left Bravo and went to own. Right. And then um I actually casted Love and Marriage DC. So like it was it's it was the concept was supposed to be its own show, but then it was easier to umbrella, you know, put it in the umbrella of Huntsville. So, hey, let's get into yeah. it, man. It's only one person in the audience, but let's make some noise for Miss <laughs> Monique Samuels. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing, man? I'm good. I'm really good. How you doing? I'm all right. Why are you so good? I I I have found a new level of peace. I am happy with myself. I love myself for the first time. In ever like I have a really deep, profound love for myself to the point where I've established boundaries. Mm. Um, I'm showing up for me. Mm. I'm making choices that are in my best interest. I'm no longer people pleasing. I've grown. I'm not the person that I was even a year ago. So that's why I'm good. I feel really proud of myself. Mm, mm, mm. I told you this is gonna be hard interview for me. I'm gonna be real. Um. You was born in 80, like... 83? 83. Yep. My birthday's on Sunday. Happy birthday. Thank you. I want to see you. You was born in 83. And you said... You was married for 13 years? I was married for 11 years. 11 years. Yeah. And you just said... You just now being able to do them things. Yeah. Why just now? Why weren't... why Why did you feel like you couldn't do those things throughout your entire life? Well, the thing about when you get married and you don't really know yourself and love yourself, you start to bond with a person that you expect them to love the parts of you that you don't want to face or love. And that creates this trauma bond. They're doing the Mm. same thing. It's like a mirror. Mm. And then um, when you finally do get to a point where you wake up and you see what has happened for over a decade, and what you've allowed to go on, and you kind of snap out of it, like, wait, what is what is happening here? Um, you feel depleted, you're burnt out, you're exhausted, because everything has been outward. Everything has been external. You're mm. people-pleasing, in, in my case, I was. People-pleasing, making sure everybody else was good, doing everything that would distract me from dealing with myself. Mm. And I finally got to a point where I had an incident where I snapped, and it woke me up. When you say you snap, like what? Like if you don't mind me asking. Literally, I got into a fight on national TV. Okay, I might have missed that. Yeah, this was with a woman, a girl. Yeah, or? yeah, it was my last season of Real Housewives of Potomac. Mm. Yeah, this was in 2019. Um, that's the gift and the curse. But about... this was before DC, right? Yes. Okay. Okay. I'm just. Yeah. Hey, I might have seen it on Instagram, but I'm just catching up. This is yeah. real time. Okay. <laughs> okay. So you got in a fight and you woke up. Yeah, it woke me up. It made me realize, like, I thought I was a person that was in control of a lot of things. And then I realized I wasn't in control of anything. I was out of control. 
Mm. And it allowed me to kind of start looking at myself and kind of going deeper, wanting to learn about myself. I didn't realize I had certain childhood traumas. I didn't realize that I knew I was a person that didn't allow myself to feel a lot of things. I would put things on the shelf and say, I'll deal with it later. And that was unhealthy. Mm. So it caught up to me. So um, you have one of those incidents where you lash out on a person that really didn't do much to deserve the lashing, but it was like a lifetime of just being fed up or being poked or being frustrated. And it just all comes out at the most perfect, unperfect time. Mm. So after that, was that, I guess, because I'm trying to make the correlation of like, that happening and you seeing that to like you being divorced. Yeah. That, that it was like a, it was like a, uh, domino it was like effect. a, yeah, it was a domino effect. Um, so once I started doing some deep digging, what happens next is now I'm starting to realize more of who I am. I'm searching for myself and I began to change. And now I'm no longer the person that walked down that aisle so many years ago mm -hmm. because that person that walked down the aisle was marrying a potential. That person that walked down the aisle was only looking to be the pleaser. And I was very imbalanced. I wasn't able to receive. I just wanted to give, give, give. And I didn't realize that even, I mean, giving is good, but if you're not also receiving, then you're out of balance, you're out of alignment. So uh, once I started demanding more for myself and creating boundaries for myself, a lot of times that will kind of shake the whole relationship because that wasn't the foundation on which the relationship was birthed. Mm. So yeah, if I'm always making sure that everyone else is okay, now, once I say, hold on now, I want to make sure I'm okay. Sometimes people don't like that. You know, they always say like, it's three sides to the truth. Yeah. Like your side, my side, and the truth, things like that. I don't believe that. I feel like the truth is the truth. Mm -hmm. But I respect people's opinion, right? So when you say like, um, it was time for me to like, like I was always giving. Mm -hmm. Right, but essentially, like nobody was giving to me. I feel like, and I don't want to make this about like a particular person, but we here, shit, we talking. Okay, let's talk. I feel like your husband at the time wouldn't wouldn't think that's true. Like I feel like he would say he give, right? Mm -hmm. Like, like, I, and maybe I'm projecting, mm -hmm. and maybe it's be good for conversation, right? Because okay. maybe that's how men think. <clears throat> but like, so you share his last name, right? Mm -hmm. Some would say like he was an NFL player, so like he gave a lot. I mean, probably financial, whatever the case may be. He probably created this lifestyle. And a lot of times, as men, that's what we think we have to offer because we don't know any better. And I'm not defending nobody or nothing like that, but I'm just coming from a, from a perspective of a man. So when you say like you wasn't getting, what is it that, without having a, a fight between man and woman, what is it that you needed that you couldn't get, I guess? I needed vulnerability. I needed protection and covering. I needed to feel safe. I wanted to be able to feel safe in my femininity. Mm. But when you have to become hard and you're starting to carry on some of the more masculine traits, um, it's hard to feel safe when you're with a person that allows you to do some of the things that I feel like a woman shouldn't have to do. Like what? Um, when it comes to protecting an image or... Uh, when it comes to taking on certain stressors. I don't think women were really built to to take on stress. We're very spiritual. Men are very physical, you know? So when we become the protectors of the family, that's that's out of line, you know? Especially for me, um, when we were dating, I was working for him, you know? So I was his business manager. So when it came to... Uh, when it came to making him look good, I was fine with looking bad. So I'll just give you an example, just something small. Say, for instance, there was a, an appearance that he had to do, and he doesn't want to show up for that appearance. Maybe maybe he forgot about it. Maybe he just doesn't feel like doing it. I'd be the bad guy, just fine. I'd be like, you know what? I, I slipped up. It's my fault. I didn't add it to his calendar. Can we reschedule? I would take the heat for it. Mm -hmm. So what happens is that was the way that the – foundation of the relationship was built it was built with me taking the fall it was built with me being the bad guy so long as he looked good I was doing my job mm -hmm. so now that translates into a relationship that translates into a marriage I was expecting the shift to happen and that's the thing about expectation is that you think once we get married oh now you're going to do those things for me mm -hmm. and it never works out that way 
So I won't say that he didn't show up and do anything. It's just that certain things that I felt as though I needed, he wasn't able to give me. And there were certain things that he needed that I wasn't able to give him. Mm. So it's definitely not one-sided. I take accountability for my part. Even with the marriage coming to an end, um, I have no problem saying that there are certain things that I know I could not do for him any longer. Mm. Um, I couldn't love him the way I felt as though he needed to be loved. And when I had what I needed or what I thought I needed to be loved, and I realized, like, you know what? This just isn't who he is. I had to get to a point of acceptance and say, okay, if nothing changes and he remains this way, can I live with him and be with him for the rest of my life? I don't want to change this man. I don't want to make him into the person because now he's not living an authentic life, you know? Um, and it becomes stressful because now I'm expecting you to show up as this person that you never were. Mm. But for the version of me when I married you, it was enough. But what happens is when you go on these spiritual journeys and you start learning yourself and you start growing, it doesn't work if both of you aren't growing. Mm. And it doesn't mean we have to grow at the same rate, but we both have to be growing. One can't be stagnant, you know. Um, so it got to a point where he was willing to make changes for me, but the change wasn't consistent. And then it wasn't fair to him because I'm like, I don't want you to have to change who you are mm. to appease me. I want you to just show up and be who you are. And if you can show up and be who you are and that works for us, great. But if it doesn't, we got to make some decisions here. Mm. How hard was that to walk away? Very hard. Very hard. It took me years. The first time that I wanted to exit the marriage, I never used the D word because I never wanted to play around with it. But the first time that I wanted to exit the marriage, where I really was just like, yo, I don't know if I could do this. My daughter, who is now nine, she was six months old. So yeah. it had been years and years of just trying. And what's interesting is a lot of people saw uh, Love and Marriage DC. And I got a lot of flack for that show because that's the thing about reality TV. They will show me reacting. I'm a, I'm a reactor, or at least I was. I was, a, I was very much a reactor. So if you always see me reacting and then I'm open with the cameras, but then my spouse isn't as open as me, so he's going to be quiet. So if I'm always reacting, you're always showing me and then you're showing him just kind of sit there like he's just taking it, you know. Um, but when people saw me on reality TV, that last show, Love and Marriage DC, what they saw was me at my wits end. Mm. I was I was at a point where I was desperately begging and pleading for something from him. And it's funny, when we did that show, I kept telling the producers, I hope that this show will trigger something in him so that he can hear me, mm -hmm. you know, so that he can really feel where I'm coming from. I wanted him to be vulnerable with me. I felt like I didn't really know who he was anymore. I felt like he was giving me just surface. And I would tell him all the time over the years, I'm like, I'm not one of your fans. Like, I'm your wife. Like, you can be open and vulnerable with me. Like, talk to me, you know? So what they saw was me yelling, screaming, crying, pleading, all of the above. And then finally getting to a point where I was like, if I could do it all over again, I wouldn't have walked down the aisle. Mm. What hurt the most, I guess, like after it's all said and done, after the smoke clears? Having to restructure a life for my children because I have three kids mm. and the idea that they no longer will have mommy and daddy under the same roof. Um, one thing about children is that they can feel the energy. They witness the dysfunction. Um, they know it's not normal. Something about it feels off. But mommy and daddy are still under the same roof. And I did not want my children to normalize what they saw as their standard of what a relationship should look like. Mm. Um, I feel like a lot of times we become what we witness as children, which is exactly why I am where I am. You know, it's what I witnessed as a child. I thought certain things were normal. Um, so I didn't want my children to look at that as normal. I wanted them to understand that I always preached love yourself. Mm. And they were literally watching me do the opposite in so many ways. They were watching me, you know, deplete myself, work myself into exhaustion. Um, my ex-husband tried where he could, but I just think when it came down to it, we were just speaking two different languages and we couldn't figure out how to interpret it. 
mm. right way. That's the part that hurt the most. Um, do you think, man? I guess like before, because we want to talk. Mrs. Curry, do you think that y'all went into it without a foundation, or y'all had a foundation and it just separated? We had no foundation. Right. We went to marriage counseling, and our marriage counselors, when I look back on it, I'm like, oh, they were trying to get us to not walk down the aisle. They kept asking us, was this date, is this date hard set? Do y'all have to get married on March 3rd? And I'm just like, well, we're not changing the date. I already got my dress, and, you know, we already got the invitations out. We already got the, everything reserved. So it's like, it's one of those things when you're young. You know, I was I was 29 when I got married. Um, we had been dating for six years at the point that we had gotten married. So it just seemed like this was the next step, right? Mm -hmm. That's how we were raised. Mm -hmm. We were raised that marriage was the goal, not that marriage was the beginning. You know, so it was almost like we worked so hard to get married, and then it's like, all right, now I can relax. And it's like, wait, what? What's going on? Why That's when the work start. Yeah. But it seemed like it was just so much comfortable, like just – so comfortable. Like, I don't have to do anything anymore. I got you. You know, and I'm like, no, let's keep it going. You know? One day I said something, um, like, I feel like with me and my lady, uh, my ex-wife, I feel like, um, I feel like we should have started that marriage. As crazy as that sounds. Like, yeah. cause we did it for six years before we got married, too. And I feel like we should have, like, I feel like a lot of the problems that people go through in relationships is because they start like behind the curve, right? Especially if you're talking about spiritual and religious. Mm -hmm. It's like, man, we do all these things that we shouldn't be doing in the, in the first place and we wonder why we're having issues in our in our relationship because mm -hmm. we're not supposed to be here. And I mean, it's easier said than done. We all human. We all make mistakes. But like yeah. you lay down, have sex with somebody, but then you're like, well, I'm not marrying this person if but you have sex with them. And yeah. then you talk about God. It's like, it don't make sense. Just from a spiritual perspective. Right. <clears throat> and, um... I was like, I feel like I kind of wish we would have got married first because then everything that we was doing for each other would have meant something. Mm. We were playing house, right? And we were trying to, like, rebuild our house or, like, build this foundation when we, when we didn't have a foundation. When it was, if we're t talking about being equally yoked, we're talking about we're doing this for God or under God's covenant, and it's like, we're not. Mm. We're, like, we're, yeah. we're trying to build a foundation that is not, it has no, no legs to stand on because mm. we're already going into it wrong if that makes sense we're doing it wrong so it's like we're we're, we're having sex with each other we're, we're we're fornicating living in the house you know what i'm saying like we're doing all these things we tell always for god and we're trying to stay with each other but it's like bro what that don't even make sense it's a contradiction yeah it's like you're working backwards yeah i say all that to say it's like <clears throat> i don't know i feel like um if we got married first it would have lasted longer i don't know what you think about that i'm just curious i just i feel like oh, that's a crazy yeah, no, I feel like when you date long, it's like, why are we dating? You know, like, mm. if, if it took that many years for us to figure out whether or not we should get married, should we even have gotten married? You know, like, mm. isn't that something that you should just know right from the jump? Like, I want to spend the rest of my life with this person. Is it something that we have to wait out the process? I look at it a little different now. I feel like if I knew myself, then I would have attracted the right person mm. that was on whatever frequency I was vibrating on. But apparently and clearly the person that I attracted at that point in time was what I needed to grow. Mm. You know, like I feel like if we have these different wounds, if we have all of this unhealed and undealt with trauma, then we typically in relationship, that's where it's exposed. Mm. So a lot of times when you are dating someone, married to someone, what have you, there those relationships are mirrors. So when you start getting frustrated or telling that spouse or partner what to do and how they need to change this and change that, you're really talking to yourself, mm -hmm. you know? And I feel like, especially when we're young, a lot of those first relationships, the second relationships are those mirrors that's forcing us to grow. And it's possible to be with someone that will mirror you and y'all both grow together. But everybody's different. Some people don't want to grow. Some people don't want to change. Some people are fine and satisfied with who they are, with all their wounds and all their trauma. And they really don't want to change. They don't want to grow. They just want to stay wh where they are. And I feel like 
that's why it's important to really know yourself before you get into a serious relationship. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't know yourself, you're going to attract somebody else who doesn't know themselves. And now you're going to be spending the rest of your life battling each other. And then now you add vows into it. And then if you add religion into it, they tell you to stay. Mm -hmm. You know, they say stay through thick and thin. And the only way you can get out is if you're cheating on each other. Mm -hmm. Or the only way you can get out is if it's abuse. But there's a such thing as emotional abuse, mm -hmm. you know, and that does a lot of damage. You know, you you have to purge all of that. Um, and I don't think people really give equal weight to what things can do to you mentally mm. outside of infidelity, outside of, you know, physical abuse. Like, it can weigh on you, and you still have to clear those things out too. So I feel like if we really paid attention to ourselves and allowed ourselves to feel what we don't want to feel, those uncomfortable moments, and allow ourselves to, like, really go down that road and, and, and learn ourselves and be more aware and then accept ourselves – I feel like we will attract other people who are doing the same work, mm. you know? I do think it starts with, like, loving yourself. Um, I feel like, mm, for me, I feel like um, if we could love ourselves, then we are able to set boundaries. But what happens is, like, I think I was talking about this earlier, we aren't, we aren't really loved in the 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 right way from the beginning, so we don't even know what real love look like. Yeah, we we come up in households where, I mean, shut up before I give you something to cry for. You know what I'm saying? Like things like that, or even shit as you become a teenager or an adult, your mother try to hold relationships for men, relationships over your hair. Like you got into this relationship, you care more about her than you care about me. Well, right. actually, if you want to be honest, my I'm sorry, but she shows up for me. You get what I'm saying? Like, you call me when you need something. But I say that to say, a lot of times we aren't, we aren't taught to love ourselves. So, like, if I can't love myself, how can you expect me to love you? Right. Right? Yeah. But for you, that's unfair because you should be in a, in a relationship where somebody can truly love you for who you are. Right. But it's like, especially as a man, I don't think I've ever been loved for who I am. Ever. Right. Like, I have to get up and show and prove in the world. I have to do something for people to love me. Like, I was just thinking about this earlier. Like, I feel like this might sound crazy. A woman can go get her body done, take a picture. Thousands of likes, right? People are like, oh, my gosh, she fire. A man got to, like, either work his ass off to get abs or win an award or, I don't know, like, he got to do something to show and prove for people to be like, that's lit. And like, we, you know, if that makes sense, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, we got to do something. I don't think we're ever, like, like genuinely... Love just for who we are. Right. That makes sense. No, that makes like, a lot of sense. And I say that to say, like, if that's if that's mentally how I've been treated when I'm with somebody, unconsciously I'm treating you like that. Right. And you might not be used to that. If that makes sense, right? Like yeah. I'm. I need you to show and prove. I need you to do something to deserve my love. Yes. And like from a woman, you probably like that's the worst thing in the world. You probably think I'm the worst. Person. Like, huh? Like Listen. you should love me because I'm me. I'm like, I, nobody loves me for me. Right. And I I truly <clears throat> believe that you only can love to the level that you love yourself. Yeah. So if you feel as though your value is based off of what you do mm. or how dependable you are or how you can show up for other people, that to you is what love means. But love should never be built off of, love for yourself should never be based on external. Mm. You know, it has to start with you. And that that was... That was and still is something that I'm adjusting to. Um, after I got divorced, I then had to sit back and say, who am I outside of the duties of being a wife, being a mom, taking care of the children? Because now I'm co-parenting, you know, now my ex has them every other week. I have them every other week. So that week when I don't have the kids, man, in the beginning, it's been a little over a year now since we've been divorced. In the beginning, like the first few months, that was rough for me because I didn't know what to do with myself on my week off. It's like I was tired, mm. but I was missing my kids. I wanted the break, but I was missing my kids. I didn't feel like I had any uh, true value because I didn't have somebody to take care of. Mm. I had to take care of me. And then that's that was like a, the next level of my journey is that you could be exhausted and sit on this couch and you're still enough. Mm. You could be 
tapped out for the day and just say, you know what? I'm just going to sit here and watch some Netflix because I can't take anymore. Like I'm tired and you're still enough. Like you're still valuable. It doesn't have, I don't have to be working myself into submission, <laughs> beating myself down and depleting myself to say, all right, now I'm worthy of being loved. You know, I felt like for a lot of, um, a lot of my marriage and even in the dating years, I felt like the entire time I was trying to prove myself to him. And it wasn't that he required that. That's what I was going to say. Was, yeah, that was yeah. my own issue. That was me. I felt as though because he was the one that um, he played in the NFL, he, he bust his butt to make the money that he made, and I wanted him to relax. I, I didn't want him to have to want for anything. Mm. I wanted him to just be able to enjoy his life. But I didn't feel like even after marriage, I didn't even feel like I had that right. It was like, well, you made this money. You you did all of this. So I don't have a right to just sit down and relax, you know. And I felt as though I had to show him that I was worth it. Like I had to show him that I'm not here for your money. I'm here because I, I love you. And I felt like I had to prove that to him by not sitting down. So even though like, you know, we might have a cleaning service that comes through every other week. Well, the week that they ain't there, who cleaning? I'm cleaning. I have no problem with mopping and cleaning dishes and cooking. I did all of that. And I look back now and I'm like, wow, I had the opportunity to actually just sit back and do nothing. And I didn't take advantage of it because I didn't look at myself like I deserved it. I felt like I had to keep working because I based it off of what he saw as valuable, which was his finances. So I was trying to meet him there. Not realizing like, okay, well, now that we're husband and wife, we both can enjoy life together. And it would be times where I swear I would like days where I was really tired and I would sit down and I'd just be laying on the couch like I'm tired. And I it, it almost felt like whether he intentionally did it or not, the way I received it was almost like, what are you laying down for? Like, that needs to be done. That needs to be done. So then it's like no sooner than I'm relaxed, it's like, all right, let me get up and handle this. Let me handle the kids. Let me... You know, so there were times later on where we would have talks and I'd be like, look, I'm exhausted. And then he would step up more. During quarantine, he started stepping up. Um, but then the consistency wasn't always there. Um, I was trying to build businesses. A mistake that I made was I thought that he would show up for me the same way that I showed up for him when he was pursuing some of his goals. Um, so when he was pursuing his goals, I made sure everything was handled, like, kids you know if we had to pick up and move do whatever you go do your job I'm gonna do everything else so then when I started doing housewives and I started uh my business Miller Eve Essentials um I was expecting that same in return where he was very open and free with like all right yeah I can I can put money here I can I can you know you know hire a nanny for extra time or whatever in the ways I still had to manage those things mm. you know so I'm managing that plus I'm trying to build this business from scratch and it was like, I'm telling him I need more of you. But he wasn't understanding because he's like, I'm paying for that. You know, I'm providing for you. So it's like we were both speaking this different language. He was still doing, but it wasn't in the way that I needed it at the moment. I needed more of him to physically do or help or whatever. Do so. you think you will ever find a man that's going to speak the same language as you? I speak a different language now. So, yeah. So not to be insensitive or rude or anything, do you think that, and I mean, from what I'm hearing, like, it was you? It's always, it always starts with self. I can see where it was me, but I, there's things that I felt as though from him that I'm careful to speak on because he still is the father of my children. Mm -hmm. And we do have a co-parenting situation. So I don't want to say anything that will cause issue mm -hmm. in that, you know, speaking publicly. Um, he doesn't speak publicly, you know, so he kind of like lays low. I've always been out on my platform yeah. talking, so I'm going to continue to do that. But I also want to show respect. Yeah, I understand. But yeah, when, understand. I'm, when I'm speaking about the marriage, I'm always going to focus on me and what yeah. I did. Okay, that makes um, sense. Yeah, so I don't, I don't, there's a lot that I could say, but I refrain. Because, no, I'm not going to ask about it. I get it. Yeah, I understand. And I respect yeah. that. I only say that because that's how I look at it the same way. Mm -hmm. Like, um... I look at my uh, situation like if I had boundaries, then there would have been a lot of mistakes that I didn't make. But right. because 
I didn't have boundaries, I got to own the mistakes. Oh, yeah. No matter what, because I did it. Right. Right? It don't matter if you provoke me or whatever I want to have an excuse to say. Yeah. It don't matter because I did it. Exactly. Because if I would have been like, you know what? I don't like that. I'm going to walk away. Yep. Then I wouldn't have did whatever reaction I thought. Yep. Right? And I think that's what um I had to learn. And that's that's what I had to learn about, like, loving yourself. Mm-hmm. And even when I hear you say, like, um speak the different language, like, that's something that I, it resonated with me. But when I hear, like, my, my ex-wife speak, it's like, I hear, like, a lot of pain. Mm-hmm. You feel I me? Mean? Like, I think it's two things that really hurt, to be honest. Like, it's like, and I never really spoke about this. And it's like, to hear her speak on it and to, like, feel how I feel and it, it be so different, I'm like, damn. Like, because me, is like, I feel like we just spoke a different language. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? In the beginning, we just didn't have enough bound. We didn't have enough courage or love for ourselves enough to, like, say no. Right? Like, I feel like it's things, like, she fell in love with somebody that she never would have liked. But the same way, the same person she fell in love with was this, eventually was the same person that she didn't like. You know what I'm saying? Friendly, whatever the case may be, like, mm-hmm. You knew you didn't like that. Same with me. Right. And I feel like that's me. You know what I'm saying? And I say, like, for me, it's like it was just a different language. Like, I was asking for things for her that she, I don't want to say she couldn't get, but it just not wasn't her. Same vice versa. Just like, just exactly what you're saying. Yeah. And I look at it as like, man, I just feel like men are men and women are women. And I feel like every time I hear it, it's the same thing. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, it makes me question, like, yo, will I ever be a person that I meet that speak the same language? Yeah. Or do I change and then it levels the playing field, I guess. I don't know. That's why I asked that question. Like, is it, it has to be. You know what right. I mean? Well, I, I feel like everybody's world is their own. I feel like everything in life is based on your your experience and your perspective. Mm-hmm. So it's not about changing the core of who you are. You are who you are. Right. But can you grow? Mm-hmm. Can you do things bit differently? Can you recognize and accept your part? And I feel like the more that you do that, the more that you elevate yourself, the mm. more that you start, like you said, setting boundaries. So the reason why we have these failed relationships is because we didn't have those boundaries at first. Like I will fully admit, and, and it's funny, like my family says, yeah, you created that monster. I didn't want him doing anything. I waited on him hand and foot. I remember I was pregnant, living in Alabama uh, while he was coaching. And I mean, I cooked dinner every single night. Back when we used to eat, I don't eat meat anymore, but I used to literally, I would buy a bunch of meat from Whole Foods. I would wash it up, season it, vacuum seal it. I would have it all loaded in the freezer. And I tell them just like, whatever meat you want me to cook tonight, take it out, sit it in the sink, you know, and I'll, I'll prepare it. And he doesn't like leftovers. So I, w- I learned how to make smaller portions so that I could cook for him every night. And I loved doing that for him. I love to, ba- to know that he didn't have to lift a finger. That's what I enjoyed. That was what that version of me enjoyed, Until who didn't love tired. herself, who didn't have boundaries, who got exhausted, who then, because of the exhaustion and nobody was reaching to pull her from underneath the water, it's like I had to set these boundaries. And then that's when the trouble started. That's when the issues began. Because those boundaries, like you said, that if you would have set those in the beginning, had you known better, you probably wouldn't have been attracted to each other. That's the shit that made me want to say fuck love. Like, because it's like... Not literally, but bro, I don't got nothing to do with me. Just like me. Just like, it's like, not, and it's, again, that's what hurts so bad because like, bro, I'm not asking, like, I'm going to love you regardless. Mm. I'm going to love you if you do that or not. So the fact that you did that, right? Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. You did that to make me happy. Now, I, right? Or now, like a year, two years ago, by you looking at me like, why, well, you don't do this for me. And it's like, bro, that's not, I didn't, I don't know. I didn't even know. Like, I just thought that's something that you love doing. You told right. me you love doing this. And now it creates resentment. And it's like, what the, f-? like, that <laughs> shit, that hurts because it's like, yo, like, I didn't do anything to create this resentment. Now we resent each other. Now you right. mad at me. And it's like, yeah, but that's you know, exhausting, bro. I was watching this, I was watching a reel on Instagram that came up and it made so much sense. The young lady said that women marry potential mm-hmm. and men marry women so that they they marry a woman so that they will stay the same they want that woman to not change like yeah. don't change you yeah. be who you are yeah. when i marry you and stay that way mm. and they say that women we typically will marry potential so we're not marrying the man that's in front of us we're marrying the man that we think you can be 
Mm. So what happens is most women in the beginning of a relationship, we're showing you through our actions how we want to be loved. Mm. We're not we're not doing those things for you simply just for you. We're doing it because we're trying to give you a template of this how us. I want to be treated. And maybe you can look at it that way, too. Maybe it is a little bit of training and manipulation in there, you know. But I think that that's what the problem is, is that we have not learned to love the present moment. We're always either re reflecting on the past or we're looking so far into the future that we never stop in the present moment and say, do I accept you for who you are right now? That's and, so true. Yeah. Because even like one of my flaws and like something that's probably terrible, not probably, is, is a bad trait. I think one thing that hurt my ex is that she felt like I um I could never see her past the person that I met her as. Mm. And that goes back to what you said. Yeah. It's like, and I got to like be honest, like, damn, like, yeah. yeah. And it's not intentional, right. but it's like, I do feel like, I'm trying to be respectful as possible, I feel like we are who we are. Mm. So even if I, I don't know, like, I don't know if you're a cheater, even if you don't cheat, Physically or, you know what I'm saying? Like, something, you are who you are. You right. was who you was before you got here, right? That's why I say, once a cheater, always a cheater. Yeah, but like, right. not even a cheater. Like, I don't want to say that. But like, okay. I just feel like you are who you are. So like, I feel like I met you a certain way. Yeah, you might not be that, but you continue to show up as that person, even if it's not in that situation, if that makes sense. Yeah. Without me trying to go into detail, right? Okay. Like, yeah. for example, if I'm at like, okay, let's say the core of being a cheater is... um no boundaries or uh, let's say no self-control. Okay. Right? So I might stop cheating, right? But being undisciplined or not having self-control can show up in other areas other of the relationship, right? right so right, now right. you still look at me as that same person. Right. Is that fair? Maybe, maybe not, right? So that's what I'm, so for me it's like, yeah, you might not be that person, but I see that in other aspects. Right, that so. Right. Yeah, so now unintentionally, I treat you like that. I don't mean no harm, but it's like, bro, like, this is the same. Yeah, you changed, but this is the same. Right, right, right. So, so you didn't really change. You just shifted. Yeah. It's like it's like a, a, a alcoholic who is like, I'm in AA meetings because I used to drink Hennessy all the time. Now I'm drinking vodka. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, but you still drinking. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so, but like like you said, like, people love you for your, like, women love you for your potential. Men love you to stay the same. Right. And that's what definitely was one of my flaws, like. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. That was terrible. But I think I think that the problem in both scenarios is that we're not appreciating the present. Mm -hmm. So, like, for me now, not that I'm looking for a relationship. I'm actually enjoying kind of, like, learning myself and getting to know myself. I want to love myself so well that I attract the type of energy that would love me the way I deserve to be loved. Mm. And I will love that person the way that they deserve to be loved because I will look at them as they are. I don't want to fix or change somebody mm -hmm. like whoever you are when I meet you if we connect we laugh we have a connection we share a chemistry um we enjoy some of the same things of course we can explore and and do new things and and broaden whatever you know our hobbies are and open up each other's minds but I don't want to look at you and try to like change you I don't want to look at you and say like if you're a person that belches loud in public and I meet you and you belch loud, I'm <laughs> I'm going to let you know it bothers me. But if you don't feel a need to change and you're like, look, that's just who I am. I'm like, oh, okay, all right, I respect that. That's mm. just who you are. And now I can make the decision. Do I still want to be with this person or not? Do I still want to be around this person or not? You know, but I feel like if we can look at a person for who they are at the present moment and say, I accept you, I feel like if that person does start to grow, You'll see those changes. You'll say, "Hey, you're starting to do this different." I noticed this, that, or the other. Like, but this you know, is why you got. You might gotta make me a believer because, like, it's been a year for you. It's been like six months for me, right? Okay. I feel like being in a like looking being single as an adult now mm -hmm. after being in a long term relationship. Yeah, it's impossible to be in another relationship because now. It's like I got too many boundaries. Like, I'm not accepting nothing now because I know better. It's like, okay, the moment you do something that I don't like, ain't no grace, ain't none of that. Because I'm like, you know what? Because I'm not going to go into this relationship and then you, I, I be stuck and then I like somebody that I don't really like. Right, right, Do right. you find yourself like that? Um, 
that's probably why I'm still single. <laughs> it's just but like yeah. I'm not going. I'm not rocking for nothing. No, nope. right, like, right. Okay, you do that, like you said, bouching loud, and you, that's you. I don't even want to change you, but I'm cool. Right. <laughs> it's like, but I feel like that's also because you're coming fresh out of a relationship, so you still a little, you you still got a little hardening. Like you know what I'm saying? Mm. It's like you gotta. You. I feel like eventually you'll get to a point where you'll kind of like relax in it a little bit. Um, but I feel like if you know what your core like must haves are, like mm. this is what. And you become those things. You know what I'm saying? Like, for me, I wrote a list the other day, like, two weeks ago. I wrote a list of who I want to be. Mm. So, like, all the qualities, all the traits, whatever I want to be consistent in, wherever I need more discipline in, I wrote a long list of 88 different terms and sentences of what I aspire to be. Mm. Some of the things and some of the traits I have, some of the things I'm trying to have. And I said, you know what? I'm going to write this list for myself and mm. goals for myself rather than trying to make this list of what I want to attract. Mm. Because guess what? You never attract what you want. You attract who you are. Mm. You know? So it's like wherever you are in life and whatever it is that you are in this present moment, that's what you're going to attract. So if you just work on yourself and focus on yourself, I feel like especially after long-term um, relationships, solitude is like, necessary mm -hmm. you know and that's probably why you're being so like i ain't i ain't, I ain't going for that that's too much because you do need that solitude to kind of sit back and just like reevaluate who you are and and why were you that person to attract a person where things could end how they ended mm. and one thing about divorce or breakups it's interesting how you'll start to see some of the things unfold in your face and you'll look like damn I was with you for this long and this is how you this is how you are this is how you at I feel like with breakups the true the true person comes out that's some bullshit bro I, t <laughs> I think I tweeted the other day I was like bro the thin line whatever that is between love and hate makes me not want to ever do it again mm. because like I don't know, bro. Maybe I'm just an empath. Like, I'm a real person. Like, yeah. all these can't fuck all that shit. Like, I'm a real person. So, like, I don't understand how we can go from my man, my man, my man, the mm. best person in the world, to a piece of shit, you ain't this. And, and I'm like, for me, I don't understand it. Because it's like, yo, I can't be that. And one part of me can understand is hurt. Yeah. But I ain't trying to hear that. That's why I said I don't believe in the three sides of the... Like, yeah. for me, it's like, it's one thing. What's the truth? So, it's like... I'm all these things, but we was together for six years and right, right. I showed up and like, how the fuck can those two people be the same? Yeah. That made me not want to get in a relationship again. Cause it's like, yo, if eventually you could feel this way about me, I don't want to feel that, bro. I'm right. good off of that. Like, I'm good. I'd rather just be, if I'm a terrible person, I'd rather be that by my damn self. Right. But you can't define yourself by how somebody else tries to say you are or perceives you. Nah, because facts. honestly, I look at it like this. Whatever, and, and I'm just speaking hypothetically, I don't know her or whatever yeah. is going on, but whatever she is saying about you, it's not that she's mad at you. She's mad at herself mm. for not setting a boundary, for tolerating it for so long, for not maybe not speaking up on it, not enforcing it. She's not really mad at you. She's mad at herself. Mm. And, and what happens is we start to project onto the other person what we actually are. Or the pain that we're feeling, we're projecting all of that on you because it's easier for us to point the finger and blame somebody else. Mm. You know, I spent all these years and you did this, you did that. But no, the onus comes back on you, mm. you know, because you allowed it. You sat in it, you tolerated it, whatever. Um, obviously, there was something in that relationship that needed to come up in both of us. Mm. And however you're seeing it, a lot of times when people start talking about the other person, it's a mirror. Mm. They're really talking about themselves. And it's funny because I feel like this is what was like a huge turning point for me that took my frustration and turned it into gratitude. I actually went and did hypnotherapy. I saw a hypnotherapist and I was really nervous about it at first, but I had a friend that went and did it and she was like, it was incredible. It really helped her open her eyes to some things that they she really did. hypnotized you. Like you was like, yeah, like, like it's, it's not really, it's, it's basically almost like you're asleep, but you're awake. Like, you're asleep, but you're aware. It's real? Yeah. Yeah, it's real. You're, like, in this state of just, like, you know how when you're about to drift off to sleep where you kind of still are aware of what's in the room and what's happening in the room, but you're yeah. kind of, like, in your body super Like, you're tired, almost that, when you're tired, yeah. it's like, you're trying to stay up? Yeah. Yeah. So, it felt like that. 
And um, but but what was important was it was our conversation prior to the hypnotherapy. And um, she basically helped me to understand that everything that happens in life is for your good. Mm. Every person that you meet, every person you have a relationship with, every interaction, there's a lesson in it. Are you willing to look at the lesson and take it as a lesson? Mm. She helped me to understand that you cannot define yourself by how others define you or you'll always walk around angry and bitter. Facts. She helped me to be more grateful for the role that my ex-husband played. She said, think about it. She said, was there ever a time where he said that he was opposed to marriage? And I said, that's funny. I said, he actually was an advocate for not getting married. Mm. She was like, huh, isn't that interesting? And I was like, yeah. She said, how are you with marriage? I said, I always wanted to be married. And I said, uh, there was a time after my parents got divorced where I was like, man, F this. I ain't, you know, I ain't doing marriage. But that was just more so reacting from what my parents went through. I said, but I always wanted to be married. She said, okay. So she said, so who is the one that switched up the role? She said, maybe it wasn't meant for y'all to get married. Maybe y'all were meant to have these kids and that was it. Maybe y'all were meant to date and that was it. She said, if he told you right from the beginning that he's not the marrying type and he doesn't want to be married, and later on he got married, she said, who's the one that changed the role? Who's the one that forced that? And she said, not saying that you begged him to marry you or anything like that. She said, but you played a different part and you expected something different from him when he was already telling you from jump mm. what he was about. He already told you that he's not into getting married. She said, and then you, maybe you pressed it or maybe you wanted more and then he changed his mind for you. Mm. She said, anytime that you're changing who you are for somebody else, when it's that deep of, of what you, you know, who you truly are, she said, it's never going to end well. Mm. You know, so she was like, you know, we have to look at the roles that people plays, appreciate the role that they play. And she said, and then also, who else to wake you up? Who else to get you to a point where you could start to love yourself? Mm. She said, you became so frustrated and depleted. Who else could have pushed you there? So she said, you should be grateful that he helped you to wake up and look at it from that perspective and not be angry with him. Don't feel let down because he didn't show up. When he's already told you that he didn't want to get married from the very beginning. She said, we choose to ignore certain things and we'll ride it out. And then maybe things change in our favor, but were they ever really meant to be? And if they did change, what lesson can you learn from it? Mm. So when she said that to me, it was so profound and it really helped me to see things differently. I don't have any ill will towards my ex. I honestly hope that he finds a person or person finds him that can love him how he deserves to be loved. Mm. I believe that he'll find somebody that he'll be much happier with that would do all the things that he requires and needs that makes him feel happy and satisfied and at peace. I really want him to find that, you know, because it would be better for our children, in my opinion, you know, like it's all about the kids at this point, you mm. know? So I want them to see their dad happy. I want them to see me happy. So like I, when I tell you, I have not one stitch of anger towards him. Um, I look at the situation for what it is. I try to figure out what the lessons were, and then I move forward, you know? I feel the same exact way. I feel you. Somebody asked me this profound question the other day, right? It was so simple. It was so easy. But that shit hit me in my heart. Somebody said, like, do you see yourself getting married again? Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you, do you? Yes. I would Just, do it again. I think because now I'm a little wiser, and I, and I know myself now. Mm -hmm. I know myself. I love myself. And I feel like I always will remain open to it. I don't want to shut it down because, you know, whatever you speak happens. Mm. So I want to remain open. And whatever I truly believe. Happens. Yeah. If you speak it, you, I ain't never get married again. You ain't never going to get married again. Mm. And you're going to keep meeting people who don't deserve your time and don't meet your standard or don't match your energy. And so I'm like, I'm going to be open. And mm. if I get married again, great. If I don't, it wasn't meant for me to get married again, but I'm open to it, you know? Yeah. And I said it was real profound to me because it was like, I never thought about that. Like, of course, I, I want to be married. I, I always wanted to be married. But it's like, for me, it ain't about nobody else but me. It's like, man, I just don't want to go through that. Like, I'm scared. Like, it's traumatizing. Like, bro, mm -hmm. the fact that you could be with somebody for 11 years and it not work. Bro, what? Like, we could be friends, Yeah, bro. it was 16, 17. I'm like, oof. I mean, I met my ex when I was 19. We started dating when I was about 22, 
I'm gonna be 41 on October 6th. Oh more than half great. my life. Yes. <laughs> Darn it, that's what it feels like. More than half my life. Um, but yeah, it, it is scary. I, I I feel where you are. I'm like I'm open, but I am very nervous because I don't want to. I don't want to fuck it up again. Yeah. You know, like nice. I'm like, if I invest this type of time and energy, I want to know that I'm 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 doing you it with I'm the dead. right person. <laughs> right, fight, like, right. Nigga, what? Like, nigga, I better be, I better see you until I'm going in my casket. Like, that's it. That's all. I want nothing. That's it. Yeah. I bet not be nothing short of that. It's crazy. When I worked on when I worked in radio, we would do a lot of topics about like co-parenting, second marriages, and things like that. And um, there was a lady that called in, and I'll never forget. It, it warmed my heart. And she said that her first marriage, she was married for 10 years, and she got divorced. And then a few years later, she met her, her now husband. She said they've been together 28 years. Mm. And she said, when I tell you, we are the same. She said, he is literally the male version of me, and I'm mm. the female version of him. She said, every day we have fun. It Every day be we laugh. Yeah. And I was like, that, it was so encouraging to hear that. And she said, the most important thing, she said, I did the work mm. and I healed after my first marriage. And she said, and I feel like my now husband was my reward for doing the work. Wow. And she said, that work is difficult, it's challenging, it's painful, it's lonely at times. She said, but I did the work and my second husband was my reward. And, and I thought that was just incredible. Yo, this is great. I feel like I know y'all got somewhere to go. I got. I feel like, but this is we get. I ain't gonna lie. I feel like I got like a, at least two more hours to come. I'm gonna keep. I'm like, I got so much shit I can talk. So I'm like, damn, shit. Uh, but let me ask you this. One thing I wanted to say was, I hate when people like the, the judgmental people, right? Um, I talk about like uh like failed relationships, right? Mm -hmm. I ain't gonna lie to you. Out of everything we did go through, or I went through, I don't feel like it was failed. Mm -hmm. Like, I honestly can say, like, I don't think it was failed. I feel like we had a beautiful child. Yeah. We co-parent amazing. Oh, There's so many people out here who can't co-parent worth a damn. We co-parent great. Like, we locked in. And we just was able to come to a, a understanding that we're speaking two different languages. Yeah. You know what I'm trying to say? And it's like, shit, if that ain't... That was a success. That's beautiful, actually. I feel like we, and it might sound conflicting because on one side it's like, man, it's hurt, but on the, on another side I'm looking like, yo, like it was successful. We we wanted a child, we had a child, we co-parent like our our child and our children because I have a bonus daughter. Like they ain't, they still got us here. You know what I'm trying to say? I yeah. feel like it was a success. It was just it ended it when it, it ended when it needed to end. Yeah, I feel like. Um... The idea and the concept of marriage, <laughs> there's there's this, how can I say it? I feel like we look at it the wrong way. Mm. I think that we've been programmed to believe that marriage is final. I don't think that we look at it as an experience. Mm. You know, one thing that my sister says that I love, she said, you know, when you're in a relationship, you have a connection with somebody, there should be no ownership. And I think that's the problem with marriages these days is there is a lot of ownership. Mm. There should always be free will, even in relationships. As long as you both are communicating and you're on the same page and you're doing what works for you. Um, free will, I believe, is why you have couples that haven't been married, that have been together for 20 plus years. Mm. And then they get married and then they get divorced. <laughs> mm. You know, they'll spend like a lifetime together, just being together. And it's this idea of just being free. Like if we decide tomorrow that we're going to go our separate ways, we have the freedom and flexibility to do that. And every day we're choosing to be with each other. Mm -hmm. But then when you get married, it's almost like this ownership. Like you feel like, like I'm trapped. <laughs> like if we argue and this person starts acting this way or that way, I got to stay with you. That was my mindset um, in my marriage. Like, I never saw myself getting divorced. Like, if you if you would have asked me <laughs> when I walked down that aisle, there's no way in hell you would ever tell you me stuck. I would be where I'm at. <laughs> I'm like, look, I'm I'm right or die. It's up and it's stuck, literally. Right? <laughs> For real. Thanks. And um, I remember the first argument that 
my ex and I had after we got married. It was bad. Um, it was actually on our honeymoon. <laughs> we had a really bad argument on our honeymoon. And it was because I expected this switch to flip. And I thought that all of a sudden he was going to be romantic and he was going to like be more catering to me. And it was just like, I'm not your homeboy. Mm. You're treating me like your homeboy. Like, you know, so that turned into this big argument on our honeymoon. And I remember coming back from the honeymoon and him being like, look, if we need to get divorced or if we need to get this and all, man, because I ain't about to be miserable for my for the rest of my life and this, that, and the other. And um, and I remember us having these arguments and me feeling like trapped. Like I was like, dang, like I thought this was supposed to be bliss. And now when we have an argument, it felt like it was always like this. I what are we like, going to do? Are yeah, gonna... it was like this prison. Like, yeah. you know, like it was crazy. And it was a feeling that we hadn't had when we were dating, you know? But I, I, I do believe that we're supposed to experience whatever we need to experience so that we can ultimately grow and, and be more aligned with whatever our purpose is, you know? Mm. And I think that sometimes marriage gets in the way of that because we marry a person that may have only been there for a reason or a season, mm. and now we made them a lifetime. And maybe they were never meant to continue on the path and grow with us. Maybe mm. they were only supposed to teach us something about ourselves. And now we stay in that position. We start to become stagnant. And that turns into bitterness. That turns into frustration. That turns into, well, you ain't doing this for me. and You mm. ain't doing that for me. You know? Um, so I feel like that's what the problem is. I don't think that we look at the situations in these relationships for what they really may be. Mm. You know? Do you think, what? let me ask you this. I think we kind of talk about it off camera. Mm -hmm. Not to shift, not to suddenly shift, but like being single. What's the hardest part about it? I'm going to ask you first. Be the hardest part about being single after being in a relationship for a long time yeah. is being alone. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was going to ask you like far as dating, like do you feel like you forever going to be in a shadow? That's a good question. I don't think so. I feel like he... I feel like we 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 alternate with shadows because people refer to him as Monique's yeah. husband or ex-husband. 100%, you know? yeah. And then um, nobody calls me Chris Samuel's wife anymore or ex-wife. Nobody ever says that. Mm. It's like once I started doing Housewives, there was like this huge shift, you know? Okay. And um, he was always referred to as my husband. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Um, I do feel like people, men, have this expectation that they have this framework to to feel you know like and I don't think that it's it's not true because it's like they don't really know what I'm looking for and what I'm about if you're looking at it from more of a um uh you know aspect of like superficial shit um I think people think that they have to have enough of something or you know and it's like I'm not about that at all never well, been about that is it though could could you really date a regular guy absolutely if you a dude that treats me right that can be open and vulnerable and we enjoy the same things like i'm really simple like i like to be outside in the woods i like to go on <laughs> hikes like on some real shit every day i'm outside i'm grounding I i'm a tree hugger like i like to just be at peace i like to read i like to journal i like to just like i i, I literally have two tvs in my house i don't turn on either one of them mm. like i like to sit in silence i like to you know listen to music I'm super simple. Like, I like to travel. If there's anything that requires an expense for me, it's going to be traveling. And mm. I can pay for my own travels. You know? So it's like, I just want to enjoy life. I don't care about what a person does. If we're growing together and making each other happy, honestly, I don't care about titles and all of that shit. Mm. Like, I don't care about what you drive. You know, I don't care about where you live. Like, I can take care of myself. I'm not looking for somebody to take care of me. Mm. I'm looking for somebody that I can grow with if I'm looking. But you know what I'm saying? Like, that's more so how I view it. Mm. Yeah. Yo, do you feel like, well, you was in radio. I'm pretty sure I had a lot of these conversations because radio is just like to get clicks. How do you feel about this never ending conversation of like man versus woman? It's like, uh, it just won't stop at this point. <laughs> I don't know. I just feel like people need to respect what we bring to the table. I feel like men are physical, women are spiritual. As simple as that. Mm. I feel like, I don't like, I don't like the expectation that we as women put on men. 
Uh, I do are you feel pandering like, right now? No, I swear to God. No, I'm. I'm. You're not I've being a pick me, are you? You said what? You're not being a pick me. Hell no. Up. I'm messing with I don't you. believe in that. No. <laughs> I'm messing I, with you. I've been doing a lot of deep digging, and even with myself, um, I feel like we expect so much from a man, but I feel like the things that we should expect, we aren't even requesting. For me, vulnerability, protection, covering, you know, look out. Look out for me. Mm. Make me, let me feel like a woman. Open my damn door. Like, mm. simple shit. We don't look for those things. Like, women go straight for the pay for this, pay for that. Um, it's funny because people for years, like since I've been doing housewives and stuff, even before, they they see me with this person that, you know, made a lot of money in the NFL, and they automatically sue, oh, you must be a gold digger. Oh, he must. My ex didn't pay my bills. Like, I made sure I paid all my debt off before we walked down the aisle. Mm-hmm. And that was something that I was very proud of. Because because I knew that that was always something that people would would assume or expect, um, I that meant a lot to me mm-hmm. to be able to say, no, I'm going into this because I love this man. You know what I'm saying? Um, but, yeah, I just I feel like we need to change our expectations. And I feel like men have some expectations about women that just aren't realistic. Like what? Like, Cooking and cleaning? At, no, let's look at bodies. Let's look at libido. Let's look at, like, a man will expect you to be the same fiery animal sex machine that you were before you had kids, after you had kids. And at the end of the day, you can still be that, but there needs to be a little help. There needs to be foreplay all day. Foreplay for a woman could be just you saying, hey, I got the kids. Go t- go lay down take a nap. Man, that stuff is sexy as fuck. <laughs> That, look, that will turn me on. I come home in the kitchen clean. I ain't got to do shit. You done brought dinner for the kids. Oh, yeah, you about to get fucked tonight. Like, See, yo, we not even thinking about that. Like, that's yo, what let, me, let me clean the kitchen so I can get some pussy tonight. Well, y'all got to understand, for women, we have to be settled in our mind for us to even be able to access that. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, we can't be stressed out and then thinking about sex. That's something that is like. That's a man it, thing for start, sure. Right. It's Because I'll be be- stressed. I'm trying to fuck. It, be, fuck. it becomes work <laughs> at that point. And who wants sex to become work? That's terrible. Okay. Yeah. So it's like if you can handle some of the things that you know stress me out or tire me, I'll have the energy to do those things later. Mm. So it's like I think that the expectations, it's like you want me to be this video vixen and I got a baby on one tit and I got another one running down the hall, following me, yelling, mommy, mommy, mommy. Like, mm. if you can step in and give me a break, because people think that being a stay-at-home mom is some type of, like, like dream job. Man, that shit is far more work than working a nine-to-five, and you don't get to communicate with actual adults mm-hmm. and have adult conversation. You talking about the ABCs and coloring and shit, <laughs> like, with children all day long. You don't have an outlet, you know? You in the house with the babies. That's 24-7, cleaning and doing all of that stuff. Man, you be tired. I feel like women need to... I ain't gonna lie to you. I feel like women need to, like, think before they ask for what they... Think before they ask for shit. Because, like, I ain't gonna lie. I thought at one point... Because I, I I did that for, for, for a second. I'm not gonna lie. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was the end-all, be-all. Like, right. I bet. If I pay all the bills and you ain't gotta do nothing, you just stay home... Bet. Perfect relationship. Shit. But staying home is a job in itself. No, for sure. It is. Yeah. It is. But I, that's just what I thought. I was ignorant. Yeah. I didn't know anybody. I thought, cool, I'll pay all the bills. You yeah. shouldn't complain about nothing. It was like, <laughs> God damn. Like, it was like a reset. Like, I'm like, shit. <gasps> yeah. What do you want from me? Yeah. I feel like the 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 expectations aren't clear. That's yeah. for sure. I definitely feel like that. And a lot of stuff we just don't know. Facts. If no, we've facts. never had children before, we don't realize how much of, of aware that puts on our body and Man, having babies ain't no, that, man, that mess is serious. Like, you're literally creating a human, and then they let you leave the hospital and go home with it, and then you got to take care of it. And And, and then as men, what I will say is, we aren't shit. We a piece of shit when it comes to being empathetic of having a kid, because, like, I'm not going to lie. Well, I, I was. I didn't, I don't know. I just felt like. It's just supposed to go back to normal. I don't know. Like, I was a piece of shit. It takes I don't know. time. Yeah, it's just like... It takes like 18 months. Yeah, it's like, you just like... It's bad. It was bad. Damn. It was, <laughs> bad. It was just bad. It's you know You know what else is hard, bro? Like, I feel like that public... Like, having a public relationship... Oh, my God. I was at... Worst. I think I was, like, getting an acai bowl the other day. It was like, oh, my God, I love you and your wife. And I'm like... 
So if I was with another chick right now, because yeah. I could be. Right. Like, what would it, like, it's going to be hell for, you know, you, do you think, like, the next person you date, they're going to have to have some big shoes to fill? Not even just because he was an NFL player, but just because y'all was public. It's like, yeah. people going to be looking at you funny. They're going to be asking questions like, what the fuck you think he's going to say? Yeah, it's always going to be this comparison. <laughs> yeah. It's always going to be this judgment. <sighs> it doesn't matter how long time has passed. Like, I've been divorced for um, over a year now. If I start dating somebody tomorrow, it's going to, look at her. She dating already. She ain't even let the ink dry. Right. Like, like, nigga, the ink been dried. Right. Nigga, that shit been filed and everything. First of all, even before the finalization of the divorce, there was already the disconnect. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? For months, for years, however. So I'm just like, there's, there's always this, I think that when it comes to the public, they just look at it and they 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 put all their hopes and dreams into what you have and mm. they want it, they want that perfect picture but of course you're not going to put all your dirt on social media yeah, like most of the times you're always going to post the night the, the nice pictures and the good memories so people see what they want to see and they don't even they don't even give you the courtesy of just saying oh they might have had other things going on that we didn't see mm. they just have the picture in their mind and they mad if you mess up their picture mm. no thanks <laughs> you know so what, what what you got going on now? Like, why was you here today? Like, what what, what are you doing? What so what's my, you doing? What's going on? So my sister, um, my sister Natasha, she actually manages a new artist that was recently signed to Jeff Jam, T. A. Thomas, and um, they're here for a few days doing press. And um, of course, she on the East Coast because she lives in L. A. So she's like, I'm gonna be in Atlanta. So I was like, What's the dates? I'm coming. Okay. Because I get to see my sister. Okay. I haven't seen her in a few months. So. Um, so I'm like, yeah, I'm coming down. So I came down to just hang with her. And, um, and it was funny cause I saw you on his press run on the, um, on the sheet. And I was like, oh shit, they about to be. <laughs> no, tell the people down. how you full of shit. Tell me how you know me, you watch this shit. I do. Tell the people how I was in your DM for like two years. Two years. That is so funny. So I, I had no idea. So we here, so I'm here with TA earlier. So we about to wrap up. So I was like, can I get a selfie with you? So he's like, yeah, come on. So we take the picture. I get in the car, I'm leaving. I said, I'm going to send him the picture. So I go to hit message and I'm like, oh shit, he DM'd me. And I was like, wait, this is from two years ago. <laughs> I don't check DMs. Mm -mm. You know, and I had to think about what was I going through during that time period. That was during Love and Marriage DC. Mm -hmm. I was stressed the fuck out. Mm. Love and Marriage DC, let me tell you, that was, that was my greatest nightmare, but my greatest teacher. Because it 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 basically it put me out there mm. without any context. Like on this show, when I tell you I was ranting and raving, I was at my I was at my wits end with the marriage, and I was like doing all that I could. I'm like trying to get this dude to see time is of the essence. Like I really need you to step up. I need like, you to wake nigga, up, please. Yes, <laughs> but imagine you being on camera and having a conversation. And now something said in the conversation that pops you off. Mm. They ain't showing nothing about that. They just showing you pop off. So when I tell you, it was like every single scene I was yelling and I was going off. And when I tell you, the whole synopsis of the show was get to know the real full me. Mm. Get to know the real me. And, and they got me like only have me yelling and going crazy. The angry black right? woman. Yo, it was That's terrible. And and it was crazy because I came from a show where I was a fan favorite, and then now I'm supposed to have my own show, and I am like the most hated. Mm. And um and it was it was kind of it was tough. I was like, damn, they are on me hard. And and I had to get to the point where I said, you know what? I feel like this is the part of the story where my ego starts to die. I had to kill my ego. Mm. I had to to care even less about what people thought about me because only I knew what was really going on, you know, mm. behind the scenes. And uh, it was a huge test of just like, all right, let's see how much you've grown. How did that show come about? Um, so when I left Housewives, there was one of the producers that used to be a part of Housewives franchise who started his own. Um, he approached me with support and came at me with some like, you know, we black and... You know, these these white shows, they don't show black people in the, the light that they should be shown in. And, you know, it can be natural drama. It doesn't have to be this scripted drama. And and it created a relationship of like, all right, let's see what we can do together. Let's work together. So I believed him when he used the black card and he did me worse than the white folks. <laughs> I was like, he could have waited to the second season to so trash think, me. So you think Love and Marriage DC 
did you worse than Real Housewives yeah. of Potomac? Yeah. Damn. It was worse. It was like, there was no context. There was no, like, there was no reason to all of the fussing and fighting. It was like, it's love and marriage. So show the full outlook of what a love and marriage, like, show what all of it looks like, right? I have always been very open on camera. Like, mm -hmm. I, I like to be as transparent as possible. But if if my spouse is not always is not also that way, then if you're not saying anything, they're only going to be showing what I'm saying. Mm. So it was very unbalanced. Um, and then it was just like we got her, dog her ass out. Like it was like my name was used to gain the audience, and I mean I got I felt like I got trashed on that show. They didn't show any of my real moments. They didn't show the moments where. I gave more uh, context to what was happening. It was just like me, like, yeah, 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 yeah. But I was the one reacting. I was, it was me reacting, but mm. show why I was reacting like that, you know? And it was very unorganized, um, on camera, off camera. It was a mess. Mm. And I left after the first season. Did you think it, do you think it was good for anybody else? Like, I guess that was on the cast? Yeah, I actually had some people come up to me. Um, I did an expo and a lot of people came up to me just like from DC in general. And they were just like, you know what? I don't know if anybody's ever told you this, but you actually helped to put certain places on the map in D.C. Mm. because you actually filmed in D.C. with your show. Okay. She's like, a lot of shows come and they use the D.C. name or the DMV, but they don't really show D.C. And they were like, you know, with the go-go intro, all of that influence, they was like, we appreciated that. So and you helped produce it, too. Um, basically, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, basically, I remember when, when they were talking about doing the intros, I said, now, you know, you got to have a go-go intro. I mm -hmm. said, we can't do DC like that. Like, so I definitely had a lot of influence in how the show was being like handled. I casted oh, wow. it and all of that stuff. Oh, you got but, like the cast too? Yeah. Sheesh. Yeah. So you kind of like put niggas on. Yeah, I did. Put I did. niggas on the map. <laughs> did they, did the cast thank you? Or did they dog you too? Some of them dogged, some 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 of them thanked, some of them were grateful, some of them no. Mm. Yeah. That sucks. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. You get to see who who's who's real and you get to see who is like chasing that limelight. You know, that that when them cameras cut on, man, people show you who they truly are. That's for sure. So like you really seen like people change in real time. Oh yeah. Who? Oh yeah. Who changed? <laughs> I ain't being messy. I ain't got to do that no more. I don't be... <laughs> it's most funny because it's like, I don't care. But like... <laughs> Everybody else. <laughs> Everybody else. Like, fuck it. Like, they know who changed. <laughs> you can see it. It's pretty evident. That, so that show still going on to this day? I don't know. I saw something on Instagram where they got a show, but it was like all white people. But it was some DC stuff. Oh, uh, Love is Blind. I think you talk about Love is Blind. Yeah. Because that just, that's just about to air. I but it's like all white people. Yeah, it was weird because it don't look like D.C. at all. Like, it don't look like Like, D.C. is Chocolate City. Yeah, for sure. Like, yeah. what the fuck is this? I don't know. Nah, that's They crazy. need to go back to the What, what is this, man? What's going on? So, I have an essential oils company. This is actually my newest release is my skincare products. Mm -hmm. So, a lot of people have, like, over the years, they're always like, oh, my God, your skin glows. And this is a product that I developed. And um, I have essential oils. I have self-care products. You didn't bring me none? Yeah. You know, well, because I didn't know I was going to, I didn't know this was going to happen. I didn't. I'm gonna send you something though. Uh -huh. I'll send you a diffuser with some oils. What's but that? I, huh? What's that? A diffuser. So it's basically like a cool mist. You put water in it and you add drops of oils into it, and it has your house smelling like a spa. Oh, okay. Yeah. I say. And it cuts off whenever the water runs out, so you don't have to worry about no fire hazards and nothing like that. And it actually purifies and cleans the air while it's running. But yeah. Oh, that's cool. But let me tell you something about this product right Which here. Which one? Which one? That one. The bottle. Look at the bottle. This. That one. That I make myself. Like I created that recipe. You it's make this toner. yourself? Yeah. It's a toner. Can I trust this? Uh-huh. You can probably smell it through the cap. So it's a rice water-based toner. And the thing about rice water that people know is that rice water, when you ferment it, it stinks. It smells terrible. All right, let me see if I can take the lid off because sometimes these lid be, the lid be like fighting me. Um. So basically... Take your time. Yeah. If you can't get it, don't worry about it. I think I can get it because I took it off. There you go. I took it off early. All right, now smell that. bunch of essential oils mm. like 10 different essential oils and rice water normally smells like eggs like it smells terrible mm -hmm. so i figured out a way to make rice water without the funk 
And this is actually really good for eczema, psoriasis, even toning the skin, hyperpigmentation. Gives you a glow. It's called Flawless Glow Toner. And this has been like my top seller. This was my first release in my skincare product line. How much something like this cost? That one's twenty four ninety nine, and it lasts you for ninety days. Yeah. So my prices are really reasonable. My whole kit lasts you uh, a good like mm, three to five months. I give you a lot of product. That's not bad. Yeah. So yeah. So, so how much the kit cost to get together? For all of that that you see right here is two fifty. It's not bad. And it lasts you. Yeah, because some serums cost like two hundred dollars. I try just, to make it reasonable. You is know? this paying the bills right now? Yeah. Really? Yeah, I actually left radio so I can do this full time. And I and I homeschool my kids. So I, I, oh, yeah. Shit. So I needed I, I didn't have the time to like do radio, do the business, take care of my kids. So I was like, I was really running myself then. I think I seen that on you had that was like your first time coming back to radio or something like in twenty twenty two or whenever uh, you I started radio for the first time in twenty twenty two. I was, and you was on the show, and a half right? Years. It was during the show. Yeah, yep. I, I feel I, like yep. I seen yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was okay. yeah. They actually captured me actually starting and everything. Yeah. Okay. And um, August twenty third this year was my uh my last show. I decided to resign because it was just it was too much with the hours, the drive, all of that, and I was trying to do expos and really get Mila Eve on the map. And I had to like turn down certain ones because of my radio job. Oh wow! So it was like I'm like, do I want to? Pour all my energy into somebody else's vision and dream, or do I want to pour into my own dream? And then yeah. with my kids, they are like, "Mommy, we want to wake up with you." Like uh -huh. they hadn't been able to wake up with me in two and a half years. So that's dope, man. Yeah, thank okay. you. Okay, this is fire. So yes. outside of this, what else you got going on? So I'm actually um, doing a YouTube series. Um, it's been my outlet. You know, I left radio. Uh, I have a YouTube channel called Tea with Monique, mm -hmm. and I started this series called The Self Challenge, and it's basically me sharing what some of my process was. You know, with uh, navigating this um, this journey because it can be very difficult. It can be very lonely. And I wanted people to realize if you are also going through this journey, you're not alone and you're not going crazy. No, so, yeah. So every week we talk about just different ways to grow personally and um, and, you know, dealing with shadow work and all that type of stuff. So it's been really fun. And, and I love people. They be hitting me up. What's the homework for this week? You know, so it's been really good. Now, this is dope, man. I can't <laughs> wait to see uh, what's next for you. Uh, Shit, hopefully, um, we probably can sit down and do this again. Yeah, I, fly, I still got millions of questions, but <laughs> I'm gonna let y'all go, man. This is good for the people that don't know. Let them know how to follow you, all of that good stuff, how to support this, everything. Yeah, so you can follow me at moniquesamuels.com is my website, shopmelaeve.com, and follow me on Instagram at Monique Samuels. So, yeah, this is good, man. Thank Mr. You. J Hill, J Hill Podcast, Monique Samuels. It's a wrap. We out.